Hi, my name is Quirijn, and in this bits of Q tutorial, I'll explain all you need to know about C++ 20's concepts in just five minutes. Say you have a template function, like this sum function here. Since we are using templates, you can pass it any type, and it'll just add them up and return the result. If we look at the signature of the function, there's nothing here that prevents us from passing non-numeric types. Of course, you could say that the name of the function or the name of the template parameter already indicates that it expects some number, but there's nothing in the language enforcing this. This is where concepts come into play. They allow us to swap out this generic type name keyword and instead specify exactly the category of types that this function can accept as input. If you're using one of the latest compilers, you can even get rid of the template keyword altogether and use this shortened notation. There's three ingredients to a concept. First, the concept name, in our case, number. Next, we have the template parameters for our concept. They are the inputs to our constraint expression. For a simple concept, like the number concept, we only need a single template parameter to represent the type for which we want to verify that it is indeed a number. When using a concept as the type for a parameter in a function or class, the type of our input, in this case a and b, will be deduced and supplied as the first template parameter to our concept. In other words, if I call sum with two integers, it will verify that the type int satisfies the number concept. Here, to satisfy the concept means to satisfy the constraint expression, which brings us to the last ingredient of our concept. Formally, the constraint expression is defined as a combination of conjunctions and disjunctions of atomic expressions that evaluate to bool. To put it a bit simpler, you can use AND and OR statements to tie together things that return Boolean values. Of course, all these expressions that evaluate the bool do need to be compiled time expressions. As templates, as well as their constraint variants, concepts, are evaluated at compile time. For our number concept, we could say something like this. A type is a number if it is either an integer or it is a floating point type. Here, std floating point is a concept from the standard library. You can find it in the concepts header. And the reason we can use it here is because concepts can be evaluated in a Boolean context. When doing so, they will return true if the type, in this case t, satisfies the concept. Note that here, when evaluating this floating point concept, we are explicitly specifying the template argument t, whereas when we use number in our sum function, the first template parameter was deduced based on the input. An additional benefit of the fact that we can evaluate concepts in a Boolean context is that we can use static asserts to verify that our concept works correctly. In this case, we're verifying that int, float, and double are indeed a number. We're also testing that when passed a string, the concept is not satisfied. If we were to also check whether our number concept is satisfied for const int, we find that this is not the case. Which brings us to the next benefit of using concepts. They give really clear error messages. For example, in GCC you might see static assert failed. It failed because const int doesn't satisfy the number concept, and it doesn't satisfy this concept because a std is same v of const int comma int evaluated to false, and b const int doesn't satisfy the floating point concept. We expected the latter, but overlooked the fact that our is same v wouldn't work for const integers. We can easily fix this by adding the remove cvt type trait to strip the const and volatile qualifiers from our t before passing it to a same v. Even with this addition, our number concept still doesn't really work that well, as for example, an unsigned int still doesn't satisfy it. So let's have a look at a different approach to constraining the input to our sum function. Let's say that we only allow types that are convertible to a double. To do this, we'll need to define our first concept taking multiple template parameters. In this case, convertible to takes t to be the deduced type, as well as an additional target type parameter. It then uses the isConvertible v type trait from the standard library to check whether t is convertible to target type. Note that the order in which we pass the template parameters to the isConvertible type trait is reversed compared to the order in which we define them for our convertible to concept. The reason we want t to be the first parameter to our concept is because the deduced type of our input will be the first argument to the concept. So looking at our instantiation of some function, t will be deduced to be an unsigned integer, and hence it will test the convertible to concept for unsigned int and double. So we now find a pretty reliable way to ensure that the input to our sum function is some kind of number, and that hence we can indeed add up the inputs. But 
if we really look at the implementation of our sum function, there's nothing here that requires a and b to be a number. All that we need to successfully execute our sum function is for the addition operator to be defined for the type of a and b. Indeed, you can add up two strings, which would just concatenate them. In other words, what we actually want to do is test whether the interface of the deduce type t supports a certain usage pattern. In this case, whether our t supports the addition operator. This is where concepts get truly powerful. But to unlock this power, we need so-called requires expressions. These requires expressions allow you to easily test whether our type supports a certain operation, and will be the main topic of my next video. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the next one. Thanks for watching.